Hello everyone. Welcome to GS Core. I am Abhishek Saxena and I teach public administration. So today's session is about a part of approach to public administration. Right. And in this session, we are going to talk about rather approach to paper one of public administration that is administrative theory. Okay. So, before we get into the substantive part of administrative theory as in how to approach this particular paper and the contents and the syllabus related to it. Let me highlight some of the important aspects uh, which you need to keep in mind, right, uh, before we get into the more substance of it. So first of all, let me tell you about how I am going to uh, structure this particular session. So we will be talking about, uh, you know, things like the syllabus, the trends, sources and some hacks or tips. Okay, so that is going to be the larger idea. Also, if we look at paper one, the structure uh, assumes importance here. When we talk about paper one, we have 12 units to take care. Right. Also, just on the side, paper two has 14 units. I want to emphasize the point that interlinkage between the units in a paper and with the paper two is important to write impressionable and good answers okay also there are certain units which can be combined least studied for the benefit for example in this we have a unit of financial administration and here we have a unit of financial management concepts which lie here hierarchy authority leadership right all those things get reflected here in civil services, etc. as well. The Weberian bureaucracy, the Weberian bureaucracy here. So there are strong interlinkages between both the papers as well as within the paper itself. Okay, so that is the first thing that I want you to keep in mind while studying public administration. So while we study it at the foundation level, yes, we may divide it in silos to understand the nuances of each topic, subtopic and a unit put together, right? But once we are, we, we have covered that ground of sorts with our basic foundational learning, the next step is to enrich it. Okay, so that is very, very important. Also, another thing which is important is that in the mains examination, each paper is of 250 marks. Right, and there is a structure which is there. I will be specifically talking about paper 1, right, and we will see paper 2 for the approach class in paper 2. So, if we talk about the structure of the examination, the examination consists of 8 macro questions. At least, this has been the structure of the examination so far okay if the upsc decides to surprise you i mean it is anybody's guess but for several years this has been the structure wherein question number one and five and this i am talking about paper one right question number one and five are compulsory which have five questions of 10 marks each Right, whereas other three portions, so this is section A, this is section B. 
other three portions are equally distributed in the sense that each question is of 50 marks. Within this, if we look at 2, 3, 4, 6, 7 and 8, it is A, B, C, right, wherein A is of 20 marks, B is of 15, 15. So, that is how the distribution is. Out of these 8 questions, a candidate is expected to answer 5 questions and hence making 250 marks in total. Out of those 5 questions, question number 1 and question number 5 are compulsory. Okay. And out of 2, 3, 4 and 6, 7, 8, 3 questions need to be attempted. But you cannot choose 6, 7, 8 only or 2, 3, 4 only. Each section should have at least one question. Okay. So you may choose 2 and 7 and 8 or 2 or 6 and 7 or 2 or 6 and 8. Right. Like that or vice versa. 7, 2 and 3. 7, 3 and 4. 7, 2 and 4. Like that. So at least one question from each section and the two can be from the, the remaining one can be from any other section. Right. So this is the scheme. So if we look at the entire question set that we get is of 400 marks out of which we need to write answers for 250 marks and the questions are largely intermingled. So, it is not to say that first 6 units will be there in the first part and the other 6 units will be there in the second part. No, it is not like that. I repeat, it is not like that. The questions are mixed. Okay. So, that is the first take up. Right. So, we need to plan for the exam like that. Now, let us move to the heads and get into the substantive part. So, if we look at the syllabus for public administration, the first unit of paper 1, that is administrative theory, the unit itself is titled as introduction. While there are multiple areas, for example, meaning, scope, significance of public administration and I will be using this non-standard abbreviation PA for the convenience of this session. However, in the examination always use the standard abbreviations or do not use the abbreviations at all or if you are compelled to use an abbreviation, qualify it that here on you are going to use a particular uh, expression as abbreviation. Okay. Significance of public administration, Wilson's vision of public administration, Wilson's vision of public administration, evolution of discipline of public administration, evolution of discipline and the present status. Concepts like concepts like NPA, that is new public administration. Concepts like new public administration, public choice approach, public choice approach, challenges of liberalization, privatization, globalization, good governance 
कॉन्सेप्ट एंड एप्लीकेशन न्यू पब्लिक मैनेजमेंट तो आई एम राइटिंग दिस होल सिलेबस द आइडिया इज नॉट टू राइट द होल सिलेबस फॉर यू इन दिस सेशन बिकॉज दैट इज इजिली अवेलेबल इन द यूपीएससी नोटिफिकेशन एंड एल्सवेयर एज वेल I am not going to write the same for every unit out there, but the idea is just to explain to you that all these things are interrelated. For example, you can adopt multiple approaches. One, you can have a timeline approach of the evolution, right? And based on evolution of the discipline, you can pin various topics from the classical management that comes in the following units. to the era of good governance npa npm etc you can pin it and understand it well because it is all about interlinkages or the it is up to you with whatever suits you right or you can study them in silos and then arrange them right so that is the larger idea behind it that how we need to approach the discipline so we can get basics of what this is all about right read these concepts and then basically plug it into the larger evolution or through evolution basically learn these things right so that is another way of doing it whatsoever suits you okay and then of course wilson's vision of public administration is one of the seminal ideas because woodrow wilson is considered a very important figure uh, in the discipline of public administration mind you wilson was also an ex us president right and has contributed significantly to the study of public administration so while this is there all these topics involves theorists and thinkers right so every time because it is paper 1 it is going to be grounded in theory every time people get scared oh my god so many theorists and thinkers because in this also we will have to whether a question is on npa npm pct we will have to relate it with theories that if something is there why it is there and if something has been bypassed then why it has been bypassed so you will have to provide that sort of a theoretical reasoning in the questions right and as far as the trends go i will you know simultaneously tell you about the trends because remember the paper is of 400 marks out of which 250 marks is to be attempted so every unit has the significance but you cannot break away from the fact that i will cover this unit and leave this unit because things are interrelated the comparative public administration is cool will come in evolution as well which is our unit later so while the syllabus for the ease has been broken down into various sub sections this subject in its entirety remains and we need to see it from that perspective hence it is essential also you need to analyze things from the previous years questions point of view as well that what is asked for example if i tell you that on an average in the last 7 years and i am talking about 2016 to 2022 means examination this unit on an average has been contributing 50 marks 50 marks right out of 400 so i hope you are able to appreciate that out of 400 it is on an average 50 marks so it will be distributed across set of questions some which may you which you may choose to attempt some which you may choose to give a pass but still it is worth 50 marks and hence this is a very very important solid unit also it is the basic of public administration and hence it is important so the ideal way to approach is to understand the basics right and once you understand the nitty gritties 
what are these various approaches what are the various thinkers and then plug it into evolution right because if through evolution you will start then you will keep on you know going micro 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 and you will lose the track here you will be somewhere involved here so instead develop these learning packages for you and later actually order them so you will get a bigger picture it's like you know creating small segments just like we create a bridge we cannot create a bridge or a flyover like that we break it down into various segments right and we then then assemble them together at the site so that is the kind of approach that we need to take with this particular unit understood right so that is the way to do it i told you the trends as well and hacks we are amalgamating with our discussion so that is the approach i will come to sources in the end now the next unit in paper 1 is administrative thought remember every concept has one or more thinkers associated with it right whereas in the unit of administrative thought uh, you have concepts and thinkers uh, which are there there are other units which will be coming which will have their own thinkers so while the syllabus might not mention a thinker right there are thinkers which are there so administrative thought is about scientific management and scientific management movement as such okay the classical theory weber and other thinkers will come in and their contribution okay mp foley chester bernard elton mayo not bernard elton mayo uh bernard then simon simon will come later also okay likert argyris macgregor so all these thinkers will come now a common problem which every candidate faces is how to cover these thinkers well the idea is again twofold either you cover these thinkers in isolation right you will have to read what they talked about okay and then basically weave them together with the larger idea of public administration the better way to do these thinkers is because once we have completed the fundamental meaning scope significance then we can understand the background of what public administration is all about as a discipline and once we have known that we will study these thinkers and link them with the meaning scope significance etc and the fundamental basics of public administration and these thinkers also represent you know eras of transition scientific management right then classical then you know slowly behavioral school participative school socio psychological school all these things will come up and that is how we can link it because one brings an improvement over the other in the larger improvement of public administration so that is the kind of idea that we need to adopt also these theories are trying to bring about a central aspect of which public administration is that is the goal attainment of the organization here the organization is the government for what the goal of government is what public interest so how these thinkers have contributed to the theoretical aspects that is essential to bring about improvement in the overall administration and then basically glaze it with the idea of public ad so that is the kind of an approach remember 
एवरी थिंकर एज आई सेड ब्रिंग्स अपॉन एन इंप्रूवमेंट ओवर दी थिंकर प्रोसीडिंग दैट एंड इज ट्राइंग टू व्यू द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन फ्रॉम अ पर्टिकुलर लेंस सम ऑफ देम आर लुकिंग एट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन फ्रॉम द वर्कर लेवल राइट एंड सम ऑफ देम आर लुकिंग एट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन फ्रॉम द मैनेजेरियल लेवल वाइल देर आर थिंकर्स हु आर यूजिंग another lens one superimposed another in the sense that whether they are looking from the top or from the bottom they are trying to look at it from the conceptual angle whether authority leadership hierarchy or a mix of a few right and are trying to bring about organizational efficiency so that is the larger idea so you just remember the thinker their contribution but a lot of you would say sir it is very difficult how can we you know remember so many things the idea is to combine them into themes scientific management classical management behavioral participative socio psychological modern post modern think and once you understand the background of the theme the thinkers are plug and play once you know that okay i am talking about a comedy movie right so in comedy movie you have certain actors which are famous with comedy so you can easily plug and play with them right i mean i'm i'm saying in general parlance so similarly if you know the theme right you can easily plug and play with these thinkers if we look at this particular unit easily 40 to 50 marks on an average from this unit out of 400 remember i emphasize this point out of 400 okay so these two units if combined represent 25% of the marks which are there to avail okay in the examination right next we come with the unit of administrative behavior so while in unit 2 we were looking at thinkers and then these thinkers were looking at the organization from a lens right here administrative behavior these lens are nothing but concepts and orientations remember top bottom this that authority this and that whereas in administrative behavior we are doing the same thing that we are using thinkers and lenses but here we are putting the lens first and then plugging the thinkers okay so here the idea of decision making morale motivation okay leadership etc so leadership macro theme then various thinkers plugging into it ultimately all are looking for organizational effectiveness whether this or this so we have just switched the roles nothing so the understanding part remains the same okay so that is the kind of uh, you know approach here you will we will have thinkers motivational thinkers process thinkers think th theories of leadership by various theorists right so things like that thinkers will come here also also this unit and the previous unit will have certain overlapping elements as well because remember as i said and i will reemphasize each thinker is contributing and every time a thinker is contributing either that thinker is proposing a new thing or tweaking something which has been said by some other thinker or completely dismissing it or criticizing it right either bhai ya to it will create a new thing improve upon something which has already been created or completely criticize and come up with that earlier thinker was completely wrong this is what i am saying is correct this is the kind of approach so the thinkers are interrelated that way 
while they have given their theories in isolation based on their studies, their analysis, their research, but they are related to the larger concept of administration and bringing about organizational efficiency or administrative effectiveness. Okay. So, these thinkers are linked. For example, the human relations school will criticize the scientific management school as mechanistic. Right. So, this is the kind of an approach that improvement criticism is going on and thinkers are linked. And administrative behavior will be read in a similar manner. We look at on an average 30 minutes. So, just the thinkers and the basic understanding of these units is approximately 130 marks. Okay. Next. Unit number four, which is about organizations. So we are talking about unit number four as organizations, but organizations have been in our psyche. If we look at the previous units or as well, right? What these thinkers were talking about was, you know, about improving these organizations, improving their profitability, effectiveness, etc., and then juxtaposing that with the government, how government can function well. Okay. So if we look at organization again, we are looking at theories. Theories through the lens of various orientations. Remember, in behavior, we talked about concepts. Here, we will talk about orientation or mechanisms. Where we are talking about, let us say, uh, you know, contingency systems. System approach, contingency approach. Okay. Here we will have also aspects like ministries and departments, field offices. Okay. Field offices, commissions, advisory bodies, headquarters, regulation. So remember. I am talking about regulation here. You might have studied in general studies, right? Regulation like TRAI, CAB, etc. All this is related to the first thing. Governance, good governance, liberalization, privatization. So that kind of linkage has to be drawn. And similarly, this will be linked in paper 2 as well. When we will study the various structures of the government. So here, it is using these orientations as the lens. And then you have thinkers which are plugging into it. So the approach slightly gets tweaked unit by unit. How we need to see it, visualize it, conceptualize it and then organize our studies. So that is the kind of an idea that I want to give you. Similarly, you will have system theorists, contingency theorists, etc. contributing to the analysis of public administration in the way organizations are structured and the interplay between the organizations. For example, HQ and field agencies. And this is a very popular topic asked in the UPSC examination time and again. The dynamics between the HQ and field agencies. Okay, so that is the kind of an approach that we should take for this particular unit. Next. Unit number 5. Accountability and control. Well, if you look at good governance as an idea, it also has accountability, transparency, rule of law, participation, consensus orientation, responsiveness, Right, equity and inclusiveness, efficiency and effectiveness. Aren't these ideas related? But good governance we studied in unit one. Okay, so here again, 
we will draw heavily from indian polity but not a polity driven approach to our studies we will orient it through the lens and through the action of public administration so while the concepts of accountability control and this you will study in organizations as well you will study when you will study the concept of authority leadership how command and control is exercised right so these things are related to that as well so an integrated learning approach needs to be brought about that yes once we have studied the micro topic and the concept then how well we can link it with other concepts which are there in our syllabus okay so accountability and control apart from this we'll talk about executive accountability judicial accountability and the idea the learnings will be used in paper 2 as well at the same time what we will be studying in paper 2 will be used in paper 1 right remember writing answers of paper 1 you will have to give a glimpse that you know paper 2 as well at the same time while writing answer in paper 2 you will have to give a glimpse that i know paper 1 as well in a way to write integrated inclusive answers okay idea of uh, media interest groups civil society okay citizen charter rti etc okay uh mind you i forget to mention the marks distribution for organizations it was about 25 marks okay this also is of 25 marks the accountability and control on an average and this i am saying from 2016 onwards to 2022 please don't go for scrupulous you know pyqs which are there in the market uh, because they are grossly incorrect i would suggest you to work on pyqs yourself uh, to actually analyze which pyq falls where at the same time there can be certain subjectivity because the questions can allude to more than one concepts across different units just like i said that the concepts of this concepts which are mentioned here our accountability control etc are related to good governance as well so somebody might have put that in you know unit 1 but the question is of unit 5 so things like that might happen so there will remain somewhat room for subjectivity but not at all that it is going to be subjective to a very large extent no okay so this unit also has a uh, you know distribution of 25 marks next comes the unit of administrative law this unit is very very surgical and brief in the sense that it talks about scope meaning significance scope meaning significance then thinkers like IC, AV DC, delegated legislation as a concept, okay, and the administrative tribunal looks very straightforward, simple. The questions are also direct, but the interpretations are many. So while the DC is one thinker mentioned, there are going to be others who have contributed, okay. So a conceptual understanding. is very very essential for this particular unit on an average 20 marks okay so the right way to approach this unit would be that once we have covered the basics and then in a way glaze everything with the idea of administrative law so to understand it okay next comes a very important unit that is 
CPA Comparative Public Administration. Again, here the thinkers make a comeback in a big way. Also, the idea of comparative school in public administration. Also, the administration and politics in different countries, current status, concepts like ecology and administration, analysis of Riggs. Riggs is a thinker again. Fred Riggs is his name. Right? His conceptualization is very, very important. So, whenever we talk about comparative public administration, it automatically means that we are talking about everything that lays before and after it. Because we are into comparative analysis. It is just a way, a method to compare. Right? And it is the theory of that. And the learnings out of the uh, research that has been done. So, this unit assumes a lot of significance because on an average, 45 marks gets asked. Average. Right? And obviously, I hope you understand these figures are rounded. Right? I have rounded these figures. So, that is the idea. So, without understanding the fundamentals of administration, right? Without understanding the various thinkers, various schools, you cannot compare. What will you compare if you don't understand that one is water, other is oil? How will you compare if you do not know what is what? Okay. So, this unit assumes importance from that point. Okay. Next is the development dynamics. The idea of development. Okay. Development administration, concepts like anti development thesis. Okay. The debates, bureaucracy and development, bureaucracy and democracy. State versus market debate, impact of liberalization. Again, remember liberalization we studied before in unit 1. So, impact of liberalization, women, development. So, getting far more contemporary in its discourse. But it is it cannot be done with the general talking. Or, you know, very, very laymanish view. You will have to understand that when we talk about Development, what do we mean by development? What has Amartya Sen talked about it? What, has, what is the UN's view about it? What is the World Bank's view about it? What is the IMF's view about it? So that solid theoretical background is needed in this unit. Okay? Almost contributing 50 marks. Almost. Right? And mind you, the, the distribution at times can go very, very, uh, you know, lopsided. At times a particular unit like unit 1 or 2 might elude 60-70 marks. So, correspondingly, it will eat on to the mark share of some other unit. But I am giving you an average of last 7 years or so. So, as to give you a sense that these units are important and how. Okay. So, that is the larger idea. When we talk about development dynamics, we will have to create that base which we have studied <coughs> and look at it from the modern connotations. Just like I said, whether a state is there, market is there, women, right? So, all those discourses will feature here. How the bureaucracy, the civil services looks at the development, things like that. Okay. Next comes. The personnel administration. Remember, not personal, personnel. That means manpower, people. The personnel administration is nothing but a unit on human resource development. Just like you have an HR in any company, it is about the government's HR mechanism. Right? And the theoretical part of it. What lies behind the action or the implementation. So, it is nothing but government's HRM, right? So, things like, uh, you know, concepts like position classification, discipline, recruitment, training, appraisal, promotion, 
ओके पे सर्विस कंडीशन ग्रीवियंस रिड्रेसल मैकेनिज्म कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एथिक्स ऑल दे विल फॉर्म द पार्ट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर यूनिट इजिली एवरेज फोर्टी मार्क्स okay this is important from that point of view so this concept what do we mean by training why training is necessary what are the various mechanisms of training theoretically then in personnel management in paper 2 we will see how it is done in indian context in implementation right similarly what is recruitment why is it essential right code of conduct ethical questions etc so all these things will come here they will benefit you in ethics paper as well next unit 10 that is public policy again while you see national education policy national health policy those are there as the practical example what is the theory thesis behind it how we should frame a policy what are the challenges issues what are the various models which we can adopt right just like we are adopting a model for our analysis so what are the various models of public policy that can be adopted every model will have its certain benefits and certain limitations so obviously those models and their critique given by various scholars again so thinkers important okay how do you plan monitor activity basically in the policy cycle okay how the public policy is formulated so these things are there on an average if we look at this unit it is on an average 20 marks 20 marks then comes the penalty mate unit techniques of administrative improvement these are the tools methods to bring about administrative improvement as a stand alone concepts but you cannot divorce these tools and mechanisms from the theory in the sense that if i am talking about technique to improve decision making so that i can get make better decisions ultimately i am looking at thinkers and theories of decision making right because we studied those in organization okay uh, in account uh, in in uh, administrative behavior i beg your pardon so when we talk about this here work study work management organization and methods so this is a technique this is i am not talking about general word organization and methods this is a technique okay things like e governance it again if i am talking about e governance can i disassociate e governance with transparency and accountability no i mean today you book something online a government service let us say you apply for a passport you you get a number no application number this much will happen this much amount you have paid this and that it is through e governance otherwise whom you paid whether where is your file how will you know so it is linked to transparency and accountability similarly it is linked to public service delivery okay so these things are interrelated okay other management aids like MIS, PERT, CPM, critical path method. These are the tools, scientific tools to bring about better performance. So we will have to study them, and in conjunction link them with the theories, which ultimately give us a way towards organizational effectiveness. ये समझ लो दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल इफेक्टिवनेस इज एट दी कोर ऑफ द पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन 
इट इज जस्ट दैट दर्गेनाइजेशन वी आर रेफरिंग टू इज दी गवर्नमेंट दैट इज दिंपलिस्टिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ओके सो दिस यूनिट इफ वी इफ यू लुक एट दिस पर्टिकुलर यूनिट इट इज इजीली ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव मार्क्स So the idea is to see in a mechanical manner what these tools are, how do they work, and then in a uh, you know far more realistic manner, far more integrated manner, see how they bring about organization effectiveness. If let us say there is a scenario X which is using routine methods and it is leading to an output X dash, right? If in the same scenario I am using a tool. Which is coming from here? Can it leads to X double dash or better output? Or in what situation for a better output? What tool do I need? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages of these techniques? So that is what it is. Okay. Last but not the least, the unit of Financial administration. Like I said before, it links to the financial management in paper two. The financial administration deals conceptually with the idea of what are the monetary policy, fiscal policy, right? Borrowings, debt, budget. Financial accountability, audit, etc. So obviously these concepts from the lens of administration and not just economics. Yes, knowledge of economics will help you better analyze and understand them. Okay, but from the lens of administration, you will have to see how so much bureaucracy is there. So it has a budget maximizing. tendency the march rush which everybody sees right when they go to uh, when they know a person who's a public servant that's a march mein bada rush hai Clo closing hai closing there is a march closing which is going to happen so there is a rush so all those things will have to be looked at from the lens of administration yes conceptual knowledge of economics will help but will is that sufficient no you will have to see it from the lens of public administration this unit Averaging around thirty marks. So, if you will calculate the average marks I have given you, they will come around three ninety to four hundred. As I said, not less than this. Okay, so that is the kind of an approach that yes, we will study unit by unit some concepts in isolation and then weave them together. also within units we will have to see where we are giving thinkers the first step and then the approach or in some unit the approach first and then the plug and play of thinkers so that will depend man to man person to person okay that what approach suits that person but these are the logical way to do it also you can for the ease of understanding rearrange for example in the first unit you can stop at the wilson's vision okay and then cover unit 2 3 and then 5 then 6 okay then 7 then 8 and then study the remaining part of unit 1 the public choice approach the npa npm governance good governance and then take up unit 9 and once you have understood the personnel management that is the training recruitment etc etc then take up another unit from paper 2 civil service right so that can be achieved okay for the basic understanding you can you know weave this syllabus as per your need all right then study public policy then techniques of administrative improvement and then the financial administration so that is how you can rearrange largely the rearrangement will happen in the paper 1 portion where in you stop at wilson and read the rest of the concepts after you have understood the 
theories because these theories will uh, help you because this theoretical movement of various theories 1 2 3 4 is in line with the conceptual movement classical school smt classical school behavioral social psychological emergence of concepts like np and npm and these two together actually make a single progression so that is the kind of an idea so once you visualize it very clearly things are easy right so i hope uh, the various hacks the tip that this paper is of 400 marks the trends i have given you right we will be talking about them uh, you know uh, as we go uh, obviously uh, for various different sessions that happen as part of the courses right so once we have talked about syllabus trends hacks now let us talk about the sources the sources so while a lot many sources are prescribed but at times it happens that there becomes a problem of plenty so whenever we talk about paper one while there are various books which are available out there but i would suggest that you rely on very very authentic material never go for scrupulous material so ignu material ba and ma ba will give you very basic orientation to begin with and then ma material to fine tune it but there is a problem this material is dated in the sense that it is old not revised so you might find certain things which have changed over a period of time but for conceptual understanding it is very good so you understand the concepts from this particular material once you have done this then you pick up book for thinkers that is administrative thinkers by prasad and prasad because here what they have done is they have not related things okay thinker one everything about thinker one thinker two everything about thinker so you do not know where to pin it where to stick it they they'll remain in isolation there are no backward or forward linkages available in this book so that is a major lacuna so a lot when you say ha theek hai prasad and prasad pad lo but the people start with prasad and prasad and that is the biggest mistake that they make no once you have understood the entire thing from the very basic then you can put prasad and prasad because then you will get the the ground for actually rooting the knowledge acquired from prasad and prasad okay then there is a book by fadia and fadia i personally don't recommend this book because it is very very bulky so you may choose to avoid it right because the things get covered otherwise as well then there is a book called new horizons of public administration by mohit bhattacharya this is a very good book actually professor bhattacharya is a very famous professor of public administration and if you will see that a lot of ignu material has also been authored by dr bhattacharya right but this book offers the concepts remember i told you authority decision making leadership this and that techniques of administrative improvement so you look at the index you will see acha syllabus ka ye era you know we have syllabus like this so this book is very helpful that way the evolution etc etc right so this is very good also the public policy chapter in ignu is fantastic in terms of the concepts the theories it is very good here okay so this book is absolutely indispensable i would say read this okay again uh, there is a book by bhattacharya professor bhattacharya 
that is a new look of public administration but you may choose to read it as an enrichment once you have read the larger things then the book of public administration concepts and theories by Rumki Basu. This is also a good book, right? You may read it again as a value addition, not as a basic. Okay, basic, igno, and then the thinkers and new horizons. These sources are primary. This you can add and the other book by Dr. Bhattacharya as value addition if you have time okay then arc second arc reports please if you can read the reports read the reports don't go for summary right but if you are really so boxed up then you can go for summary but i would still urge you implore you to read the reports in original and make notes because that only helps and this will help not just in paper 1 but paper 2 as well okay so paper 2 mostly paper 2 but in paper 1 also it helps you understand concepts like leadership authority decision making hierarchy morale motivation command control very very easily so these are the largely sources that we need to study okay so that is something which is there as part of sources sources need to be used strategically as i said some of the main sources are there rest are for the value addition one more source which i would like to tell you a lot many teachers themselves don't ha have not read that right that is that there is a book by Nicholas Henry. The book has been titled Public Administration and Public Affairs. This is a double edged sword. If you are weak in English and you are English is just workable, don't go for this book. Because this book has been written from the perspective of American administration. Right? But certain concepts, especially the paradigms, which are used in evolution of discipline unit, they are explained very beautifully. Very beautifully there. Right? But again, I would caution you with a pinch of salt not to read this book from cover to cover you will get boggled up only selective reading of certain concepts like evolution models of policy etc only that is needed so pick this in the end if you have time and you have the energy and the gumption to pick it up also this is a very costly book so please don't rush to buy all the books buy one book read it and then buy another book this is a very costly book, uh, you know, thousands. So there are, there are you know, selective uh, editions available on internet and other materials, reading materials. You can use that material if you want, right? No need to buy this book. Don't waste your money on this, okay? Because in total, you will not, wastage in the sense, not that the book is bad, wastage in the sense that you will not be able to consume it, right? Because remember, we are here to clear the examination. We are not here to write thesis on public administration. The goal should be very, very clear. The action should be measured. Right? If you want to, if you want to hunt an animal, you don't fire a missile on it. You will fire a bullet. So please calibrate your action. Don't overact on things. And it might lead to, overacting might lead to, uh, uh, you know, wastage of time and resources, which you could have used other, uh, at other places for more productive purposes. Okay, so that is not required. Nicholas Henry, very, very selective reading. Very, very selective reading indeed. Uh, no need to go for the full book as such. 
there are other books also which are available uh, remember any book which gives you knowledge which makes you learn things and you are able to use that book is a good book for you right what's the point of having so many books if you can't read them and can't understand and can't extract and deduce knowledge out of them this i have given you some of those books which are very very popular good and are in a way you know i have uh, uh, so many candidates who have studied these two books uh, my students who have cleared the examination right so that is the standard type of a formula that i am giving you if you think that there is another book you can always uh, you know come to me and discuss with me and we can talk about that book whether you should go for that book or not right so that is the idea so remember the approach is pretty clear the syllabus is our bible the constituents of the syllabus the interplay between those constituents in the syllabus and the way to approach these constituents is the key to understand paper 1 right and to master paper so that's all for this session i'll see you uh, in many more sessions thank you